Being a fish out of water is tough, but that's how you evolve. Nobody really knows what they're doing. Some are just better at pretending like they do. You can go slow. Allow your dreams and goals to change, but live an intentional life. My favorite writer on The X-Files is this guy Darren Morgan. He wrote my favorite episode and the top 5 favorite episodes that everyone loves. You just don't see Muslims being matter-of-fact Muslim. They're always defined by their Muslimness. We're either terrorists, or we're fighting terrorists. I remember seeing True Lies and going, why are we always the bad guys? My mom told us never to reveal that we were Shia in school. You would find out that some other kid was Shiite, and you would whisper, hey, or you would see someone at the mosque, and you'd be like, hey, that kid's Shiite. There was a lot of tension, a lot of violence in Karachi between Shiites and Sunnis. There was one week where I got mistaken for Hassan Minhaj, who is on The Daily Show, Kunal Nair, who's on Big Bang Theory, and Karen Sony of Ghostbusters. This was one week. I'd love to be in action movies. I've been trying to convince people. I don't think it's anything physical holding me back. I think it's a general vibe thing that's holding me back. I don't project action confidence, maybe. I remember my jaw would hurt because I wasn't used to speaking English all the time. Like how, even if you exercise, you'll play kickball one day, and then you're like, wait, I run, but new places are hurting because I don't use my muscles this way. My mouth was not used to making these sounds. I never decided I wanted to be an actor. I just started doing stand-up because I love stand-up. Everything else has sort of been these tiny steps leading to this. Populate your life with people different from you. Once you leave school, you get to choose the kinds of people you're going to be around rather than forced to be around them. The world is getting smaller, and people are bumping up against people from different parts of the world with very different points of view. The challenge of our time is going to be, how do you allow other points of view to exist within what you traditionally see as your world? I just hope that there's a market for somebody who looks like me as the lead of a rom-com, you know? Stand-up is successful if they laugh. It's unsuccessful if they don't laugh. If you do a sketch, that's a very short narrative. Stand-up, it's bit-to-bit, -bit, minute-long narratives. When I started working on Michael and Michael, it was my life for three to four months, and then suddenly it's gone. You really need to have that discipline. It's not even discipline. I just put down these rules. It's not like a vague, motivate yourself, and do something. It's specific hours set aside every day for certain things. Wikipedia is kind of weird. I feel it's lame to put up my own page, but I desperately want someone else to do it. You can get stuck in the trap of reading your YouTube comments all the time. Sometimes I regret it. Not everyone is going to love you. And for some reason, Stand-up has this thing where everyone thinks they can do it, so everyone thinks they're an expert. The worst job I ever had was an office job that I had for six years, and that's nothing against the people who I was surrounded by, because they were wonderful people. I'm from a family of doctors, and I think they really wanted me to be a doctor. I even sort of assumed I would be a doctor. Honestly, I would love to be friends with Fox Mulder on The X-Files. That's almost a little too obvious but that would be my answer. I'd love to hang out with him. I never really got into game shows. The easiest one is, Wheel of Fortune, because you just have to know words, and for the most part everyone knows words. When generally people make race-based jokes to me, even if they're not technically racist, they're sort of based on me being Pakistani or whatever, on Twitter, you know, I block a lot of people who say something weird about my name or something. It does bug me generally, but it is all about context. I think, you know, a lot of the business of comedy is taking your personal experiences and making them relatable to other people. I've found that the common humanity of people is the most relatable thing, and even if your stories are very specific about a different place, if you have a relatable core of humanity, people will go along with it. I would say I try to make my comedy really personal. I try to tell stories that happen to me, experiences from my life. I moved to New York first and was really apprehensive about moving to LA, but I really, really like it. I love, love, love the street cart food. Gyros are like a meat-flavored fruit roll-up. A meat roll-up. I stay home. It's the best place to be alone. There is hardly any walk through traffic. For Weddings and a Funeral is one of my favorite movies, and I laugh all the time, 
and I cried during the one funeral. But I'll say that, Monsters Incorporated is a movie that really gets me super emotional, especially the ending. In popular culture, there isn't any other conception of Islam and Muslims other than what you see on the news. When you go to a theme park, you see Muslims riding roller coasters and eating ice cream. Why doesn't anybody think of those Muslims when they think of Muslims? I thought, from watching TV and stuff, that America was one place. They only show you LA and New York. They don't warn you about Iowa. I grew up watching Ghostbusters and Knight Rider and Hot Wheels commercials. When I got to college, having never set foot in America, I knew more American pop culture references than my friends did. I want to be so famous that I'm the pop culture reference that people would make to try and be racist to me. So I'd be walking down the street, and someone would be, like, hey, look at this Kumail Nanjiani. I don't go, it is now time to change Americans' perception of Muslims. It's going to be a long day. I think you just try to be unique and try to be yourself, and if something good comes of that, then great. I've always played some version of a nerdy guy or something like that. I mean, one of my storylines on Silicon Valley is that I am very bad with women. Rom-coms have been one of my favorite genres of movies since I can remember. My favorite movie of all time is Four Weddings and a Funeral, and then When Harry Met Sally and Annie Hall is top 5. I'm a massive rom-com head, like every rom-com in the 90s and early 2000s I've watched. Because of the internet, you're sort of forced to deal with people from very different backgrounds and beliefs. It's a great challenge of our time, and depending on when you ask me, I feel optimistic or pessimistic about it. I always felt that it was never the duty of a person to really stand up for their gender or their race or anything like that, I always felt that was a personal choice. But I do feel now that maybe my opinion is evolving or changing a little bit. I'm still trying to figure out how to have an adult relationship with my parents. One of my favorite comedies is, Shaun of the Dead. I'll tell you, nobody was more excited than me, in the entire world, that there is a, Silicon Valley, Funko set. I started a podcast about, X-Files, and ended up on it. Then I started a podcast about video games, and I'm in the new, Mass Effect, game. I have to pick the stuff I love and do a podcast on it. I started doing stand-up because of Hugh Grant's best man speech in, Four Weddings, which is basically a stand-up routine. I know a lot of brown actors who play terrorists because they're physically intimidating. For me, it was like, okay, you'll be the nerd. So I've played the nerd. I've played food delivery guys. But I always tried to find something in the characters so that they weren't just defined by what they looked like. A lot of times, it seems like social media has devolved into people just yelling at each other and not really conversing. Most people don't really do too many things because they're afraid they'll fail. There are people failing all the time, all around you. And nobody is going to notice your failure. Your failure is not going to be so spectacular that people write news stories about it. Your failure will be boring. I don't want to generalize, but the target audience for a lot of the YouTube people is fairly young, under the age of 16. You still want to know what those people are watching, because I think it's interesting, but sometimes it just makes you feel old. Visit our website for more quotes, quoting.com.